our soils here come from the granite rocks that make up the granite belt. Of course, any soils are great in some regards. The veggie growers, for example, love them because they're very easy to manage, but they do have their downside too. They don't hold a lot of water and nutrients flow out of them very easily. We have other soils around the granite belt that have a clay subsoil. They're a bit more difficult to manage sometimes. They can get a bit of subsoil water logging, but a lot of water does drain through those down to the creeks. Further west from here, we get into the trap rock. They're much shallower, much more gravelly, much steeper terrain, runs off a lot more water. That means managing trap rock soils is very different to managing granite soils. Granite soils, the water gets in easily, but it does flow out easily. Trap rock soils, it's much harder to get the water into them. And that's why maintaining good surface cover is so important. As we head back towards Warwick, we get into the sandstone country and we've got some different soils there again. They tend to be quite hard setting on top, are very prone to high runoff at low cover, but very sodic and dispersive subsoils. So sodic soils are soils that have a lot of sodium in them. The way they behave is they can fall apart and that dispersion causes a number of problems. It's in the topsoil, it can impact things such as seedling emergence, also influence how much infiltration of water you get at the surface. And when it occurs in the subsoil, the soil structure can fall apart and you get really hard soils which the roots can't penetrate, water won't infiltrate into. So what it really means is that you're reducing the bucket size in which you can grow your crop or your plants. Another problem you can get with sodic soils is erosion. So all those little very tiny fine clay particles, they can move in the water and that can happen on the surface. It can also happen on the subsurface where you get what's called tunnel erosion. A couple of ways to manage sodic soils. First one's maintaining your cover. When you've got ground cover, that helps protect the soil. If that doesn't work or you need to take more direct action, then you can put gypsum on. So gypsum displaces the sodium, replace it with calcium. And calcium is like a flocculating agent. So it brings the soil back together as the sodium forces it apart. One thing with testing for sodic soils, you can actually just get a small dish, put some deionized water or rainwater in it, and then just put a small dry sample of the soil into it and observe what happens. And if you see that it falls apart and becomes very cloudy or milky, you then have a dispersive soil and that can help inform your decision making. Our partnership with the Department of Resources through the Natural Resources Recovery Program, or NRRP, provided us with the funding to work with land managers in the Trap Rock and Southern Downs region to manage their soils appropriate to its characteristics. Here today, you can see some deep gully erosion is occurring from overland flow, and this has exposed the sodic underlayer. Further to this, subsurface flow through the sodic soil is undermining the riparian zone, leading to bank slumping and scouring, widening the gully and removing the topsoil layers along with that ground cover. Thanks to the NRRP, we were able to help Ben address the issue. Battering the gully head at a 1 to 10 ratio slope provides an earth ramp from the natural land surface above the gully head to the repaired gully formation and downstream. The earth ramp has then been quickly reseeded to be vegetated to reduce the chance of the waterfall effect reoccurring. Vital to the success of all of this though is the use of some temporary fencing to protect the gully works from the livestock until that vegetation has established effectively. This will essentially slow the flow of water, mitigate the erosion occurring and improve landscape condition. Cover is king, as they say. If you want to minimise erosion, you need good ground cover. Getting more than 30% ground cover is so important to reducing your runoff and therefore reducing your erosion. If you're reducing your runoff, you're actually increasing the amount of water that gets into your soil. More water in your soil means you can grow more pasture or more crop.